Wow. All right, guys. What's going on? We had to do a little bit of an in-person video for you right now. Um, I have a little treat for you right here. Um, this is this is what that image is right here. Um, this is issue 193 of the Walking Dead comic book series. I actually went to my comic book store right as it opened to pick up this issue. And because I... <laughs> so this is a major spoiler so if you don't want to know just i mean the title pretty much says it most news outlets and like comicbook.com the most the, most of the walking dead news sites have revealed this information this is the final issue of the walking dead now i haven't really kept up to pace with the walking dead comic book issues i did cover the fact that in issue 192 spoiler alert rick grimes was killed um, different from the events of the show and the show, obviously he was taken in a helicopter and he's going to be in movies that, with a group that is completely unique to the TV slash movie series. So his fate in the comics and the show is different, completely different, which I prefer. I didn't give my thoughts too much on that, but I didn't, I don't know. It felt very anticlimactic the way Rick died in the comics. Maybe that's the way Kirkman wanted it because now he basically dies a martyr. He's a martyr. Because his legacy is talked about, discussed at length in this final issue, and what he did really shaped his philosophies and what he did for these communities and these people really shaped the way they lived moving forward. Um, so this issue, I mean, if you know, if you don't want to be spoiled about what happens in it, when this when this cover art first came out. Most people thought that this would be a Negan exclusive issue, that this was Negan in a leather jacket, that he was uh, decayed and that he had been wandering around in the countryside and that maybe he had found a uh, an isolated group of people and that maybe he would find there would be some like extra extra story to uh, to Negan because he hadn't been in the comics for 20 plus issues ever since he he made up with Maggie and he walked off into the sunset without Lucille. Um, that's not the case. This is actually this is actually just a walker, and it's the house that it's walking towards is actually an older Carl Grimes <clears throat> with Sophia. If you know in the comics, Sophia's still alive. Sophia's his wife, and they have a daughter named Andrea, who they named after Rick's partner in the comic books, who is Andrea, not Michonne as it was in the show. So this is a walker that made its way onto Carl's property. He kills the walker with Michonne's katana that she has abandoned. And he's Carl's confused as to how this walker got on the property. And this the main story behind this is older Herschel, Herschel Green, um, Glenn and Maggie's kid. He has been... He, he created a traveling circus where he has walkers for entertainment purposes. And this walker got loose. And Carl actually goes to a, to a trial, two different trials, because he kills the first walker, which Herschel says is his property. And then he goes into Herschel's caravan and kills all of the walkers that he had because he just doesn't, he doesn't like the practice. His father died so that they didn't have to ever see walkers in the first place, that they could reboot society and move on from the dead and move on from that grotesque lifestyle, that really raw, um, thonic lifestyle that they had lived through and that they were moving on. And so Carl has two speeches, one he gives to a general counsel one he gives before Michonne, who is the grand trial jury, and she basically puts in a new law that says that the dead are not for entertainment purposes, um, and that they've moved on, and that that things are 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 improved because of what Rick did, and there shouldn't be a memory of this. So they do give certain homages to certain characters. You see, Eugene is actually uniting the Western Front. I guess there's a society out there, the West and the East, via the trains and the railroad that he was working on. <clears throat> um, he's older, you know, talks about his health, you know, trying to improve all of the things with the technology that we've seen. Uh, Carl also shares a scene with Lydia, who he didn't actually end up with. That was his relationship in the comic for a lot of the comic book period. Um, 
they they share a few moments together but it seems like Lydia also is in a relationship with somebody she still has Carl's hat which is funny <laughs> that it's it's a gift that she just kind of kept um there's also a moment where Negan is referenced. I guess Negan's still alive. He's living at the house that he used to live in with Lucille because Carl has been leaving supplies for Negan and you see Lucille's grave outside this house and Carl says that the supplies have been taken. So it's basically assumed that Negan has been living at this house and has just been living an isolated life um, without his wife and just kind of honoring the memory of what they used to have. And then when, at the end of the comic, when Carl is reading a story to his daughter, you see a scene where Negan is at Lucille's grave. And there's no dialogue, but it just shows him there. So it does, he's still alive, and there is still, you know, like, he he doesn't have any contribution. He's just isolated. No one interacts with him. Carl does try to interact with him. And he actually makes the point that Negan knew his father. He knew Rick. So he wants to talk to him and be like, I, it, it's, it helps keep his memory alive. And Carl has a line of dialogue where he says this, that, 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 you know, he wants to try to talk to Negan, but Negan just, I guess, doesn't want anything to do with the world. He's kind of taken a Zen Buddhist kind of, that's not confirmed, but he's just taken a very isolated life. But I'd be interested to see how he acts. Is he still the foul mouthed guy we knew? Or is he a lot calmer just doing, you know, is he doing yoga and meditation, stuff like that to put him in a Zen mindset? I don't know. I don't know, because he's basically just living out his days isolated until he passes away and gets to see his wife again. I mean, that's really his hope. So, I guess, you know, for Kirkman, there really wasn't much more to do with him, but they did give some homages to him, showed where he's basically living, been consuming supplies and stuff like that. So, um, so that's the comic book issue. It's super long, 70 plus pages long. And I guess this is returnable, but I don't know why you would, because this is rare to have. It's the final comic book, which we didn't know. Now, if any of you, so... <laughs> I heard the news before the comic came out, but here's basically what happened. Covers for issues 194 and 195 were released. Now, they always do this. Charlie Adlard, who makes the artwork, and Robert Kirkman, they tease the art for the next two issues before the current issue comes out. So the issue for August and September of this year, they, they were shown. So... Actually, I think they're in this comic book here. They actually included them. They included them in here. So let me see. Okay, so right here. So that was supposed to be the artwork for issue 194. And then that was supposed to be the artwork for 195. So this was Sheriff Kapoor. And then this, I guess, was going to be Negan. Like, in, it's, uh, like getting stabbed by Michonne's sword or something. Um, and those, those issues never, ever, they never came out. Um, funny enough, Sheriff Kapoor is a character in, in this, he's, he's a sheriff. He's just the, the, a new character who appears in the flash forward when Carl is older. So Sheriff Kapoor is actually a character. Um, he wasn't just made up for this. And I guess this 195 is just, it's the pose of how, ne um, not Negan, Rick, when he was shot, he's, he's holding his gut, keeled over blood, but they just kind of drew the sword. There is, so what I'm going to do now, this is the final page, in case you guys were wondering, um, with Carl and uh, Andrea, him reading the story to her. But there is a long uh, speech, I guess you could say, by Robert Kirkman. And I'm going to read it to you right now. I haven't read this. This is the first time. This is kind of like a reaction. I'm going to read this to you guys. Um, again, it's, it's, if you have the comic, it's out. It's also online. But I just wanted to read this to you right now. So this is, <clears throat> this is the end of The Walking Dead. That's it. It's over. We're done. I'm sure you have a million questions. And I'm sure you feel as emotional about all of this as we do. If not more so. I'm completely willing to bet some of you are angry over this. I get it. I do. I mean, why didn't we announce this so that fans would have some time to prepare? <clears throat> well, personally, I hate knowing what's coming. As a fan, I hate it when I realize I'm in the third act of a movie and the story is winding down. I hate that I can count commercial breaks and know I'm nearing the end of a TV show. 
I hate that you can feel when you're getting to the end of a book or a graphic novel. Some of the best episodes of Game of Thrones are when they're structured in such a way and paced to perfection so your brain can't tell if it's been watching for 15 minutes or 50 minutes. And when the end comes, you're stunned. I love long movies for that very reason. You lose track of time because you went in convinced that you're going to be there for a long time. But the story moves at such an entertaining and engaging pace that by the time the movie's wrap, wrapping up, you can't believe it's already over. Surprise, it's over. All I've ever done, all a creator can do is tailor make stories to entertain themselves and hope the audience feels the same. That's all I've ever been doing and it seems to work most of the time. The Walking Dead has always been built on surpri um, surprise. Not knowing what's going to happen when you turn the page, who's going to die, how they're going to die, and it's been essential to the success of the series. It's been the lifeblood that's been keeping it going all these years, keeping people engaged. It just felt wrong and against the very nature of this series to not, not to make the actual end as surprising as all the big deaths, from Shane all the way to Rick. To be honest, it seemed like a really good idea at the time, but now that we're here and the series is over, I'm having second thoughts. Not so much that I'm changing course, that would be kind of impossible to do anyway. But it's possible, as much as I hate to admit it, that I'm genuinely feeling a sense of regret over this whole crazy plan. We go on to the next page. I want you to see what went into this, though. I want you to understand why, if that's possible. I feel like you all deserve at least that. So let's pull the curtain back in a way. Well, I usually try not to, to do when it comes to the end of this series. Here's how the sausage got made. So there's a couple more pages here. This is, is eh, I mean, we'll get through this. We'll get through this. Um, way back in early 2015, Charlie Adler turned in the cover for issue 142. He had taken my direction of showing happy people at the Alexandria Fair, the booths, the commerce, a very civilized scene, and he'd worked wonders with the concept. It was a cover unlike anything that had come before. To me, it was a real turning point for this series. The thing is, this was over four years ago at this point, but I knew pretty much every big story point that was going to happen all the way up to this final issue. A couple of years prior, around 2013 or so, I'd, I'd even said to Charlie at San Diego Comic-Con what the gist of this final issue was. I revealed how the story would end with Carl reading his da daughter a storybook from Rick's exploits. I just didn't know exactly what issue that story would fall in. I knew the end, but I didn't know where it would fall. I figured somewhere past issue 300. As I've said publicly, I always wanted to reach that number, that big, round, cerebrous number that all the insane indie comics try to chase. But when I saw the cover of 142, it dawned on me, oh shit, we're already at the fair, the Commonwealth is just around the corner, and oh man, there's no way I'm going to make it to issue 300. It was the first time I realized that I just didn't have enough story worked out to get there. I didn't know exactly how long we'd fight the Whispers, or how long we'd be spending in the Commonwealth before Rick would bring about his own demise, but I knew the whole run wouldn't be another 150 issues. I started working things out, trying to figure out how long things would run, and it dawned on me I had 50 issues until I got my planned end. I always have to keep collections in mind. Now that we do 48-issue compendiums that are very popular, our most popular format, it would be very really irresponsible to wrap this series up in a way that resulted in compendium readers having to buy a different format to finish the series. So I was happy that it appeared that things would work out where this series would wrap up nicely in the fourth compendium. But I wasn't quite sure it was time to wrap things up. I love writing this series, it's been my life's dream, so when I first came to this realization, my first instinct was, well, I just need to come up with more story. I even spent a few weeks trying to come up with a new plot, new story detours to push the ending, I had in mind back and keep things going for a while, possibly even a long while, an extra compendium, maybe two. And again, pulling the curtain back, this has happened before. I've already abandoned one planned ending to keep the series going. Yep, that's an exclusive I never revealed anywhere. Huh. I've already abandoned one planned ending to keep the series going. Hmm, interesting. Let's go off on a tangent for a moment. When the story got to Alexander in issue 72... Things were going to pretty much uh, as they did. Rick and his crew were to have trouble fitting in because of everything they'd been through. That would lead to conflict within Alexandria, and it would eventually lead to Rick taking over. 
Uh, the big storyline, No Way Out, ended with Rick proclaiming that Alexandria was a place worth fighting for, that they could no longer keep moving from place to face. They had to take a stand, lay down roots, and start building from there. Their nomad days were behind them. Well, for years that had been planned to be the end. Rick would make his proclamation, and the speech would end with a big close-up on Rick's face. You turn the page, and Rick's face would be the same, only it was a statue, and you'd zoom out and see the full statue with the same vines growing on the bottom that cracks form, and you realize it was quite old. We'd keep zooming until we saw that the statue was in Alexandria, the same place where he gave the speech, but it was different. It was old and run down, broken windows and missing doors. We'd keep zooming out until a zombie walked by, then another, and we'd see that Rick had brought them to Alexandria, given this grand speech about rebuilding civilization and succeed to the point that they built a statue to honor him. But at the end, the dead won. Society crumbled again, this time seemingly for good, and that was it. Holy crap. Uh, it was a terrible ending. Bleak, sad, made the whole story pointless. What can I say? I was young, and most of the endings I wrote or came up with back then were pretty bleak. So that ending, in hindsight, was embarrassingly bad, but more than that, I wasn't ready to end the series. Not by a long shot. You have to understand, when I started writing the series, I had no clue I'd make it to issue 12. So the thought of having a book that ran 100 issues was insane. So when this book really took off in its second year, I was able to make far-reaching plans for the future. But even at that point, 100 issues ran, run still seemed impossible. So when I found myself staring down the barrel of a completed 100 series issue, I just wasn't ready to let it go. I was having too much fun. Think about the things... Think about how things would have gone if I'd wrap, wrap things up then. No Negan, no Ezekiel, no All Out War, no Time Jump, no Magna, no Whispers, no Commonwealth, no Princess, and a really crummy ending to boot. To top it off, shortly after I scrapped that planned ending and decided to keep going, I came up with pretty much the exact ending of this issue, which I felt was much more fitting and rewarding. I'm glad I made the decision I did back then. I have no regrets. This time, though, things were very different. As I worked to come up with ways to expand the story, none of it felt right. Everything felt like an unnecessary detour. It was, for lack of a better word, filler. The harder I tried to come up with new places to go, the clearer it was to me that this is what the story needed. It needed to end. So like I said, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Four years ago, this plan seemed rock solid. Never tell anyone, keep it secret, and even go as far as soliciting fake issues that will never exist so that we can really surprise people. Oh man, this was going to be great. I worked it out with freaking Kirkman, his ego. I worked it out with Charlie right away. He'd always been pushing to end on a high note. He was with me all the way as long as I didn't run this series into the ground. Charlie just wanted to make this book special. If I had a solid plan for 300 issues, he'd have made it happen. But if I started turning in stories Charlie thought were lame, I would have heard about it and he'd have convinced me to end the series. So when we talked about this plan, Charlie was excited. His fear of us overstaying our welcome and keeping this book going well past its popularity were quelled. I'll say it again. I loved, loved, oh God, I'm not ready for the past tense. Lo write, loved writing this series. I really don't want it to end. In fact, I've been kind of unsettled since I wrote the script for this issue. The whole thing just feels weird. In a way, killing this series has been a lot like killing a major character. Much, much harder, but the same feeling. I don't want to do it. I'd rather keep going, but the story is telling me what it wants and what it needs. This needs to happen, whether I want it to or not. It just feels right, while also feeling terrible. The main point of all of this, well, I'm scared. Most of my professional life has been spent on this series. Countless hours are dedicated to this month in and month out. More than anything in the last 16 years, this is going to fundamentally change my life. So I'm terrified. When my fingers typed out the end on the keyboard as I finished this script, I thought I'd feel relief or some silver of pride on a job well done. But it was really just dread. I wasn't ready for it to be over, but it was. It is. Oddly, as unsure as I feel about the ending of the story, I feel confident in how it ended. I've been building this for years, and it does feel good to end on such a happy note. I know that everything these characters lived through meant something. To see that Michonne got to find her daughter, find peace with her life, and even have a grandchild, that feels good. That the world is fixed and at peace. That in some ways, it's even better than before. That's meaningful. And to see Carl in that rocking chair, uh, reading happily to his daughter... To know that's the life Rick wanted him to have, that makes me happy. 
I hope it makes you happy too. Even if you're upset at not getting to spend time in this world anymore. I'm upset too. I'm going to miss it as much as you will, if not more so. It breaks my heart that I had to end it and we have to move on. But I just love this world too much to stretch things out until it doesn't live up to what I want it to be. I hope you understand. I hope you, dear reader, know how much I appreciate the gift you have given me. This is, a, this is to all of you. This is to me and all of you. I just want you guys to know that. I got to tell my story exactly how I wanted to for 193 issues and ended on my terms with no interference at all along the way at any point. That's such a rare thing. And it doesn't exist without the unyielding support this series got from readers like you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony Moore, for drawing the first six issues. Thank you, Cliff Raburn, for, uh, for countless hours spent shaping black and white art with great tones. Thank you, Russ Wooten, for turning my words into art month after month. Thank you, Stefan Gut Gutiano, for shaping Charlie's pencils for nearly 100 issues. Thank you, Aubrey Sitzern and uh, Cena Grace, for your time keeping this insanity in check. Thank you, Sean... McKenweets, I'm going to have problems <laughs> pronouncing some of these names, for seeing this project all the way to the end despite uh, thinking each compendium would be your last. And you know doing a great job along the way. Thank you, Ariel Basich, for keeping Sean sane and doing the heavy lifting. Thank you, Andres Juarez, for keeping this book looking fresh after being on the shelf for over a decade. Thank you, Karina Taylor, for doing your part to, to do the same. Thank you, Dave Stewart, for making Charlie's art pop on comic book shelves all over the world. Thank you, Dave McCraig, for uh, for uh, for making Charlie's art pop... Oh, wait, I lost my spot. For for you know what. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan Otley, for that amazing art in issue 75 that may never get collected. Thank you, Corey Walker, for your wise counsel before I even started the series. Thank you, Jim Valentino, for so many things, including saying change the title so you can own it. Thank you, Sean um, Kirkham, for always having an ear to the ground for what this world needs. Thank you to the team at Skybound who worked tirelessly to bring you everything The Walking Dead you could ever want and more. Thank you, Eric Larson, for the undying support even to this day. Thank you, Eric Stephenson, for the years of strategy sessions that made this series a continued success. Thank you to the involving staff at Image Comics that was invaluable over the last decade and a half, especially the accounting department. Thank you, David Albert, for your part in turning this into a truly worldwide multimedia phenomenon and all that came with it and somehow so much more than that. Thank you, Steph Rosen, uh, Roseman and Lee Rosebaum for crossing the T's and dotting the I's so I can keep all my T's and not my I, uh, lose my eyes. Thank you, Chris Simeon, for going to war and winning. Thank you... Alan Grodsky for going to war and winning. Thank you, uh, James Kamsky and the team at CAA for continuing the fight. Thank you, Frank Darabaugh, for going into House of Secrets in Burbank and saying this is the one. So here we go. We get some of the TV stuff. Thank you, Gail Ann Hurd, for, tur for helping turn this one into something real. Thank you, Charles H. Egley, for being the original showrunner and setting us up for success. I didn't know that. Hmm. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Jack Logudice, for making uh, me feel welcome in the writer's room on day one by being mean to me in the most entertaining ways. Thank you, Glenn Mazzara, for keeping the fire warm. Oh, here we go. Thank you, Scott Gimple, for taking the show to new heights and for caring enough to say no spoilers, dear God, no more spoilers. Thank you, Angela Kang. Angela Kang for the future and beyond. Thank you, Greg Nicotero, for making the zombies. Uh, walkers real thank you oh my god chris hardwick he gets a mention too thank you chris hardwick for telling the world every week that there's a comic book worth checking out thank you to the ten thousand people who work on the four on the now four tv shows based on the walking dead for pouring their hearts into this and loving this world as much as i do if not more than i do but most of all, thank you, Charlie Adlard, for sitting at the table day in and day out and devoting more hours to The Walking Dead than anyone. I couldn't have asked for a better partner. It's been a dream come true to get to shape this world together with you. This never would have happened without you. I can't believe we made it all the way to the end, my friend. Oh, my God. I can't believe it's really over. Robert Kirkman. P.S. P.S. Negan lives. That's it. So I just read, I've never done this on my channel before. I just read all of that. His freaking farewell. His, 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 his farewell. I just read the whole thing. The coup de grace, the, the, the fine. Uh, and then it says at the bottom, on the following pages, you could see Charlie Adler's line art for the covers of 194 to 196. 
They were used for solicitation so that the book would continue to appear in the distributor catalog to hide the fact that the series was not ending. As a gag, they kind of tell the story of Carl dying. That's not really anything that was intended to happen. I just thought it would be a fun thing to explore in the covers in a way that wouldn't reveal anything. It was very difficult to do covers that didn't telegraph Rick's death with a time jump for the final issue. Yes. Huh. Oh, I guess I didn't even know there was an issue 196. I guess this was the art for issue 196. That's not even available online on the wiki. On the wiki only shows 194 and 195. They need I 196. Huh. 196 was supposed to look like Carl died. Wow, that's kind of horrific. And then that's it. Holy crap. All right. Uh whew. All right. So, we're already 25 minutes in, but it's I can't make a video obviously it would probably be best just to keep it short and sweet to really get to, – to, to thank – I mean, I, I'll be honest. I have not bought all the comics. I haven't been keeping up with the comics. It was the show since season four of The Walking Dead that got me into this franchise. So the show introduced me to the comics, and then I read the comics – for the Negan stuff, like, I started with 100, like, I started from issue 100 and up, that's when I started reading these comics, and so, the way he wrote Negan, like, that got me into the comics, and then it got me excited for the show, and us building up to Negan, and then I kind of just got wrapped up into the whole thing, if you guys were ever, I haven't, I don't know if I've ever made a vlog talking about my history, but that's kind of how I got into this, but, I felt that this this was this this is an this was an important moment in entertainment history to pick up. That's why I bought it day of release, and that's why I'm doing a video for you guys honoring that. Um, I I just reading that it's interest. So a few things that I picked out. Number one, the original yeah that original ending sucked. So Rick gets to Alexandria, and then it just he like unites everyone, defeats those walkers that in no way out defeats the walkers, and then they. He's like, oh, we're going to unite, and then it just fades to a statue of Rick with Walker. Like, basically, all the fighting and, and the effort that they put into surviving was for nothing, and everyone just dies anyway. Now, the funny thing is, I can actually see Kirkman doing a troll like that. Like, I, that's not too out of the realm of the possibility of what he's done before. But... Thank God he didn't do that because there'd be no, like he said, no Negan, no uh, Commonwealth, no Whispers, nothing that we've seen in the show, literally season six to nine, the past three, four years of The Walking Dead would cease to exist if he had went with that awful ending. And honestly, the comic in the show would probably be long forgotten because so much of the marketing now is with Negan, with Daryl, with all of those main characters that have built prominence building that story up. And to end it at Alexandria, even thinking in the show, like, that would have been just so terrible. Like, I don't know how they would have freaking done that. I have no idea how they would have done that. But it's it's interesting. So he had four years ago, in 20, what, 2013, six years ago, he had, he he knew this is how it was going to end. Now, again, I still don't like how Rick died in the comics, but... The show seems to be doing something different, but at the same time, the show now has an endpoint. They have an endpoint, but here's the thing. No Carl, no Rick. Two characters that were instrumental to this are not in the show. So are we going to do, like, is it going to be Judith? Are we going to have Judith as an older woman with a man doing the same thing? Will there be a crossover with the Rick Grimes movies and we'll have something like that so that we can get to this point? That was always what I thought. I thought that Rick would survive his movie saga with the freaking helicopter people, meet up with the Walking Dead original cast, and then have some big finale where you get something like this, where Rick sacrifices himself, Judith lives to be older, and you get a perspective on how the world has changed, maybe with the experimentation the helicopter group was doing, wrapped into what the original series is following with the Alexandria, all those communities. That's, I think, what they're aiming for, really. It seems to be the most logical thing. Like, Judith is your Carl Grimes in the show. Judith is dead in the comics. She died way back in the prison in the comic books, for those of you who didn't know. So that just makes them, it just makes the most logical sense. Now, how do I feel about this decision? Honestly, it goes along with what Kirkman has always done. I mean, this is, this is the ultimate troll job by him. To make those freaking art, those art set pieces 
for this for 194, 195, and 196. So three. I thought it was only two, but it's three. Three extra issues he teased that just never saw the light of day. And he did it so he could keep the ending secret. Now, that's just, that's incredible. And unlike the TV show that gets spoiled at every moment because people go to the filming locations, they know someone who works on it, all the spoiling dead stuff I've ranted about in the past, you can't really do it with this because it's, it's pages on a book. So until the comic book shop managers got it and then they opened it and was, they were, then they realized they're like, oh, and Robert Kirkman actually made a tweet a few days ago saying, major spoilers for this issue like like please avoid the internet like he put out a a spoiler warning for this issue so um it was it was it was done well i i like the idea i like because so like game of thrones we knew it was ending like so many series breaking bad all of the big series we always know they're going to end even the walking dead show i guess we do now we will know because once it gets to this point, it gets past the Commonwealth storyline. We know that the show will be coming to an end. Now, will Gimple and the team try to do new material beyond the Commonwealth to milk the show and make it go longer? Will Kirkman step in and say, no, this is where I wanted to end it. you got to follow along with what I did. That remains to be seen. There's a lot of predictions. But I know that it's interesting. The timing of this is interesting because Kirkman is going to speak about it at San Diego Comic-Con alongside the season 10 trailer and everything we're getting with that. So July is a July of 2019 is going to be a huge month for The Walking Dead. I thought last year with Rick Grimes leaving was a big announcement <clears throat> with the movies and like there's way bigger things happening, way bigger things happening. And this is just a really fun time to be around the the series, and just to, to be around for the end of it, it's, I, I feel like, because this, this series has meant a lot to me, like, I think the messages of tr uh, trying to compare our world to what this world is, I've always liked the, those comparisons, and in, like, the way humans act in certain situations, and how they could com be compared to how we deal with anger, and hate, and love, and all those things, I've always loved that about the show, the comics, and, I, you know, they, they did end it. In a way, Rick Grimes was The Walking Dead. He was The Walking Dead, and when he died last issue, this is basically the epilogue. This is the epilogue and what comes next. Kind of like in Harry Potter, when they finished Harry Potter, and then you had that, that last epilogue chapter. Well, spoilers for people who didn't... It came out, like, what, 10 years ago? Harry Potter's been done for so long, but the, the final Harry Potter book, book seven, when... You see Harry's children going off to Hogwarts. Like, you have what the future is after Harry uh, succeeded. And that's kind of the same here. After Rick succeeded by uniting the Commonwealth with everything else that was going on in their society, making the ultimate sacrifice, and then Carl continuing the legacy, that's the, that's the epilogue we get. So, so, I mean, this... It was, it's, it can be controversial for some. I know people will be disappointed because they're not getting these anymore, but I think it's just important to be happy that it happened. Like, what's the quote? Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Like, I think that for, for anything, but for this especially, you got to be appreciative that it happened. And the show and the movies, like, maybe that's why I'm not as sad. The show and the movies are going in different directions, I think. And they're going to, because we never got any details on the virus, solving the virus from a scientific standpoint. And Kirkman, I know, is like, no, I never want to deal with it. And now we know he will never deal with it. It's over. But with the Rick Grimes movies and this group that's experimenting, like this group is exclusive to the movie TV show universe. My question is why? Like, why did Kirkman never want to have the helicopter? Like, why is the helicopter group not in here? The group that has those those vests that you can't bite the walker thing through that we saw in the most recent episode of Fear. Um, the experimentation with the A and the B. What's what's going on there and why did Kirkman never, never cover it? That's a major question I have. What do you guys think? Hopefully we get the answer. And, you know, but, but the thing is we got to see the movies and also, you know, his interviews at Comic-Con will be very illuminating. So... 
it's going to be a great panel. I, I hope I can get a live feed of it. I don't know if Twitch or anything, they do that for Comic-Con. I'm going to have to look into it, but I want to see. I know it gets released on YouTube eventually, but sometimes they don't release the whole thing. So I'm going to see if I can get the live stream and maybe I'll comment on that or something. But thank you guys for watching. Um, I've never done a video like this. Like Usually when I review the con I I didn't really do comic review videos. I did one a while back, but people were just kind of indifferent to it. I think they liked the show, but this is a momentous occasion because this is, this is the end. This is the end of what, what the original, this is kind of like George R.R. R. Martin's books ending, but guess what? <laughs> Robert Kirkman won because I was concerned. I was like, oh, the shows might catch up to the comic. He didn't let that happen. The comic ended before the show, so he did not follow the route of George R. R. Martin. So he he did the reverse. So now the shows can do what they want and he will have succeeded. And um, yeah, it's interesting to hear in his voice the trepidation. There's a little bit of trepidation in like what the future's going to be and how he's going to move on. Like this has been his life since 2003, making these things, being in this universe. Like that's like losing, that's like being in, you know, not even college. Well, I mean, like grade school, if you know, you graduate high school, you've been with the, maybe if you've been in the same high school, you've been with those people for so long, and then you got to move on to a new stage of your life. It feels like that. It feels like graduating from some school, some job, some uh, something that was alive, that's done now. But again, it he can be involved in, you know, the show with Angela Kang, Fear the Walking Dead, this new third series that's freaking getting spin off the movies, there's still a lot of Walking, like the Walking Dead as a franchise isn't done. The The TV medium is alive. It might be even more alive than it's ever been. But the comic, that's coming to an end. So isn't that odd? In one year, in 2019, both the Walking Dead and Game of Thrones ended in some capacity. They just, it was the reverse. Game of Thrones, the TV series ended. This, it was the book. And it's funny that Robert Kirkman mentions Game of Thrones in here. I guess he does watch it, but, I mean, he appreciates other mediums, but um, that was a cool little reference there. So so this video has gone on quite long, but that's mainly because I read that whole, that basically, you know, it, like his his op-ed, like the end, the, his op-ed, his, his, his will, his freaking coup de grace, the fine finale, um... Just closing speech, closing speech for this whole thing. So, so thank you to Robert Kirkman for and Charlie Adlard for the art and all those people that I read off whose names I just kept getting wrong. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know how to pronounce like half some of those names, but sorry, sorry if I mispronounced them. It was not my intention, but um, I was just reading it fast. So, um, all right, thank you guys. This has been a great experience to do this video, and I will obviously this doesn't affect my content at all. I'll still do. Fear the Walking Dead review vlogs, season 10 review vlogs and reactions, reaction to the trailer. Like, this doesn't affect, like, my, I never really made a lot of videos about the comics anyway, but this just is a bit of foreshadowing that things in the show universe are gonna hit this point eventually, and then maybe they'll end, or they'll go a different direction. So, this is just kind of giving us more clues about what will happen in the show universe, so... With that said, thank you very much for sticking in with this video. I hope to see you for more of my content in the future. And thanks for, you know, being involved in The Walking Dead and watching it with me. Peace out.